Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning on this uh, third Sunday in the season of Advent. Special welcome to all who are worshiping with us on uh, the radio and uh, online through YouTube. Good to be worshiping God with you. And uh, thanks again to all our uh, musicians for a um, special music concert before worship today and to uh, Ida Maldi for arranging that. Um, as you know, we're still not uh, able to sing together, um, so we just kind of hum along to the tunes here while um, a soloist sings into the microphone, but invite you to stand as you're able and we'll join in hymn 715, Christ Be Our Light, 715. Worship service continues with the Confession and Forgiveness of Sins, which is printed there in your bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is the light and life of all the ages. Amen. Trusting in Jesus Christ, who came to share our humanity and bring light to this broken world, let us come before God without fear to make our confession. Please take a moment for silent confession. Comforting God, we confess before you and in the presence of one another that we are sinners who fail to live as you desire. So often we place our trust in ourselves and not in you. We do not love each other as you have commanded. Because of us, your whole creation suffers. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, Forgive us. In your boundless patience and mercy, lead us to live by faith in your promise. Amen. God's love for us is greater than all our sins. God promises full pardon and complete forgiveness to all who turn from sin and place their trust in Christ, the light of the world. Hear and believe the good news that all your sins are forgiven. With God, nothing is impossible. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also you are the treasured people of the Lord, people holy to the Lord our God. Keep the words of the Lord in your heart. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are away when you lie down 
and when you rise. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. we may testify to your light through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, the Snedeker family has some special music for us. through the uh, Advent wreath on these Sundays in the season of Advent. Um, over the years, of course, the candles get uh, different names. So um, first candles often called the prophet's candle, like uh, John the Baptist, which we'll hear more about today in our gospel reading, also the Old Testament 
prophets, of course, foretelling of the coming of the Messiah. And uh, the second candle um, is often called the Bethlehem candle. Bethlehem, by the way, means house of bread. Um, later on, Jesus would say, I am the bread of life. And the third candle, which we come to today, uh, also called the rejoice candle, that's why the, the pink or rose-colored candle, uh, historically that was a little festival to get you through the more penitential season of Advent to the bigger festival of uh, Christmas, of course. So rejoice candle, often also called the shepherd's candle. Um, shepherds were the first one to see and uh, see the, the baby Jesus and to tell the glad tidings of his birth. And of course, later, uh, Jesus would call himself the good shepherd. So uh, hum along there as Ralph sings, uh, light one candle. first reading is from Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has appointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks herself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. This ends the first reading. Psalm 126 will be read responsively. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. 
Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out with weeping, carrying the sea, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. This ends the second reading. The gospel for this third Sunday in Advent comes from John, the first chapter. Glory Glory to you, you, O Lord. Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. During the season of Advent, our prayers of the day all begin with stirrup. Naturally, some have called these the stirrup prayers. I don't know if a horse and a saddle necessarily come along with those stirrup prayers, but they could, I guess. The prayers are meant to stir up our hearts and minds to get us ready for Jesus the Savior. Our prayer for today says, Stir stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that that anointed by your spirit we may testify to your light, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Stir up, O Lord, stir us up. Both John the baptizer and Jesus really stirred things up when they came on the scene. I'll come back to John in a minute, but first I want to point out the connection between Jesus and our first reading today from Isaiah chapter 61. 
You may recall that in Luke chapter 4, Jesus reads these words in the synagogue and then applies them to himself. Luke 4, 16. When Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Now at first, everyone speaks well of him, but then Jesus says he is not sent just to them. He is more than a local healer. He has also come to help Gentiles and foreigners. And the hometown crowd is so offended by this that they try to throw him off a cliff. Luke 4, 29, they got up, drove him out of the town and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built so that they might hurl him off the cliff but he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. Jesus really had a way of stirring things up. Some were glad about this. The outcast and oppressed people were very glad about this. And some were unhappy about this and wanted to do away with Jesus before he caused any more trouble. People felt the same way about John the baptizer. In our gospel reading today from John chapter one, John the Baptist is out in the wilderness, baptizing people for the repentance of their sins. So that's the first thing to notice. John is not in the temple. He's out there in the wilderness. The priests and the Levites from Jerusalem who have come to question John, they think that the temple is the only place where repentance and forgiveness of sins happen. And of course, repentance at the temple involves buying animals to sacrifice, sheep and goats and doves, and it involves giving offerings to the temple. So who does this John guy in the wilderness think he is offering baptism free of charge? He is stealing business away from the temple because the people think he is a prophet. The religious leaders do not like this wild man, John, who wears camel skins and eats grasshoppers and baptizes people without charge in the river for the repentance of their sins. John stirs things up. John stirs things up, but he never claims much about himself. He knows his place. He is not the light, he is a witness to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world, and the true light is, of course, Jesus. John always witnesses to Jesus. John always points to Jesus. He is the voice of one crying out, make straight the way of the Lord. John baptizes people with water for repentance, but Jesus baptizes people with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the one who can truly forgive sins. And that will get him in big trouble with the religious leaders. Finally, it will cost him his life. But ironically, Marvelously, his death on the cross means the forgiveness of the sin of the whole world. So both John and Jesus really stir things up, so much so that both get put to death. The light of the world is extinguished on Good Friday, but only temporarily. On Easter Sunday, Resurrection Day, the light of Jesus shines ever brighter and ever onward. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. We all need light. All people have a fundamental need for light, especially at this time of year in the Northern Hemisphere. The daylight hours are getting very short now. The sun sets before four o'clock, ridiculous. Today, we are only a few days away from the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year on December 21st. Some of you may suffer from a bit of SAD, seasonal affective disorder, as I do. Getting some sunlight in the winter is important for me and perhaps for you too, for getting through these shortest days of the year. I try to go outside and go for a run or at least a nice walk sometime during the daylight hours. 
Over the years, I've received lots of good advice regarding light and darkness and how best to cope with light and how to cope in darkness. For example, here's some advice from my friends in the Bronx, New York City. They told me, never ride in a dark subway car. The good people of Fordham Lutheran Church in the Bronx, New York, where I did my year of internship, advised me of this early on. They knew I would be riding the subway everywhere since I didn't have a car. I wouldn't have wanted a car in the Bronx. Dennis, they said, the subways are safe enough. You just need to remember a few common sense rules. Don't carry a wallet in your hip pocket. At night, try to ride in the same car with the police officer. And most importantly, never ride in a dark subway car. Sometimes there was an electrical problem on a particular car on a subway train and the lights would be out. Don't ride in that one. Always ride in a well-lit car. It's much safer. Stay in the light. It was normal for lights in any subway car to blink on and off once in a while. A little moisture or dirt on the track could cause that. But if the lights stayed off for more than about five seconds in a crowded underground train car, boy, you could just feel the tension start to rise. You could almost taste the fear begin to rise in a dark, crowded subway car. Light makes such a difference. Always ride in the light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Let's think about John the Baptist a bit more here. Now, what was his role to play in relationship to the light? John 1, verse 6 again. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. So John the Baptist understood plainly his place, his role in God's salvation plan for the world. John said clearly, I am not the light, but I can point you to the light. I am not the light, but I know who is the light. Not me, Jesus. Jesus is the true light to enlighten you. Later, John the Baptist would say, I must decrease, but he must increase. I must decrease so that Christ may increase. And John speaks for all of us. His message is our message. We are not the light, but we know who is the light. We can testify to the light. We can point people to Jesus with our words and our actions. Long before Christ took on human flesh, long before John the Baptist testified to Jesus, the prophet Isaiah said this, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Isaiah 9.2. Clearly, we see this as pointing to the arrival of Christ on earth, pointing to Jesus, the light of the world. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Always work in the light, always ride in the light. In verses 10 and 11 of John chapter 1, there is actually a lament. The gospel writer laments that not everyone recognizes the light and welcomes the light. John 1.10, he was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own and his own people did not accept, accept him. So reality check, that's just reality. That's just the way it is. Not everyone is glad to hear about Jesus, the light of the world. Not everyone will accept the good news of salvation through Jesus. Or perhaps it may take them a very, very long time to let the light of Christ shine into their hearts and minds. We should not be surprised or despairing about that. Our task remains the same as that of John the Baptist, to testify to the light, to witness to the true light of Christ. In loving word and in caring deeds, to witness to the true light of Jesus. And take heart, the gospel writer John does not leave us in lament, he also gives us hope. John 1 verse 12, but to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us and we have seen his glory the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. 
the word of God, the life from God, the light of God. Jesus is the word and the life and the light. During this season of Advent, we center in on that hope. We center in on that saving grace and truth that we know through Jesus. During Advent, we prepare to celebrate Jesus first coming among us as a baby at Bethlehem, but in a larger sense, we also prepare for his great and glorious second coming among us, that day when there will be no more darkness and all will be light, that day when the kingdom of God is fully come. Meanwhile, in this present time of Jesus' advent, in this time when Jesus is already here but not yet fully come, we wait with hope and we wait with purpose and we point to the light in whatever ways we can. We testify to, we point other people to the true light of Jesus Christ. Never ride in the darkness, always ride in the light. Never work in the darkness, always work in the light. At baptism, we are, giving, we are given a lighted candle, which has been lit from the larger Christ candle, and we are encouraged, we are urged with these words from scripture. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Jesus is the light of the world. Let us always witness to the light of Jesus. Amen. invite you to stand as you're able and hum along to uh, hymn 249 on Jordan's Banks, The Baptist Cry, hymn 249. <laughs> Christ, you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anything is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share a sign of peace with one another. God's peace be with you. Peace of the Lord. God's peace. Peace be with you. Peace. 
Uh, as always, we don't uh, pass the offering plates um, during these COVID Sundays, but there are plates in the back there. And thank you everyone who um, mails in your offering or drops it by the church office or gives electronically. Thank you very much. Um, you may be seated and uh, Betty has some uh, uh, offertory music for us. Join me in the offertory prayer. God of faithfulness, we bring before you the precious gifts of your creation and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for those in need and prepare for your son's advent into our hearts. Amen. In hope and expectation, let us pray for restoration and peace, light and life. God of preachers and messengers, you have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming good news, strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay leaders, AV operators, and all people who contribute their prayers and talents to public worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
God of every living creature. You announce the year of your favor for all of creation. Extend your kindness and relief to endangered animals and plants. Strengthen the humans who rely on the rhythms of nature to make their living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all peoples and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be present with the leaders of every nation as they govern. Give them a spirit of righteousness so that your goodness and mercy is revealed through their actions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all in any need, especially for Lorraine, recovering from colon surgery, Wayne Fairburn, recovering from hip replacement, for the Sorensen family at the death of Henry, Renee Merton and family at the death of her father, Kendall and Isaac Postema, dealing with COVID, Wade Lunslam, Diane Sable, Mary Sue Johnson, Don Letterly, Angie Perkins Downs, Suzanne Ponchin, Fred and Charlene Watterson, Geraldine Childress, Jan Riggs, Ken Hunter, Brooklyn Dawson, Samuel Heron, Yang E. Kim, and the Butler family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all servicemen and women and their families, especially Micah Barnhart, Eric Herson, and Jake Ferris. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray today for all members and friends of First Lutheran Church. We pray for Grace Lutheran in Mattawa and for our companion Synod Yulanga Kilimbero in Tanzania. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, we also pray today for Josh, Sarah, and baby Hadley, for baby Kaylin Hope. We pray for Christy Horseman, baby Raylin Martinez, for Matthew Ferris in China. Protect people from the coronavirus as much as possible. Help us to be smart. Be near to all who are ill. Bless all who work to contain this virus and those who are distributing the vaccine. Be with all who are in care facilities. Lord, in your mercy. We continue to pray for racial justice in our nation and world. We pray for victims of natural disasters. Strengthen the work of Lutheran World Relief, Lutheran Disaster Response, and all relief organizations. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You are with us, O God, and our spirits rejoice in your goodness through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Our Father Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be your your name. name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come, come. your Your will will be done done. on On earth earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us us today our daily bread. Forgive Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against against us. Save Save us from from the the time of trial trial. and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please come to the Lord's table. If you are communing with us at home, now is the time to give the bread to one another or yourself with the words, the body of Christ, and likewise with the wine or the grape juice, the blood of Christ shed for you. Um, As always, the trickiest part of these little cups up here is peeling back the clear plastic to get to the tiny wafer and then peel back the foil to uh, get to the grape juice underneath that. Please come to the Lord's table. Please stand as you're able for the blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Please join in the post-communion prayer. God, for whom we wait, we give you thanks for this meal of life that you have set before us. May our sharing of this heavenly food in which you are present even now nourish our faith, strengthen us for service, and deepen our hunger for the coming of your reign on earth as in heaven. Amen. God, our Father, fill you with the light of divine love. Amen. 
Jesus, our Emmanuel, bring you assurance he will come again. Amen. The Holy Spirit lead you until the dawning of the new day. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Uh, a few quick announcements. Um, we already have heard a lot of great music today, but if you'd like to hear more, um, the virtual Lessons and Carols service is happening at 3 p.m. today. Thanks to our friends at Grace Episcopal Church for pulling that together. And um, just tune into the Grace Episcopal Church website and it will be on there um, after three o'clock also. So even if you can't watch it live, say you're watching the Seahawks or something at that time, you can, you can just tune in a little later and see the program in, that, in its entirety. So that's today at three. Uh, tomorrow, church council, we do meet at uh, 6.30. Wednesday is our last short um, Holden Evening Prayer at uh, 7 o'clock. Come as you are, very informal. It's a half hour prayer and song service. And then uh, Thursday, this Thursday at 9, is my prayer and Bible study group. Um, that'll be the last one until we get to the month of January. Other announcements we should be aware of? All right, please hum along to our sending hymn, number 266, All Earth is Hopeful. in peace. Christ is with you.